Back to our top story. Just one month after the U.S. reported its first COVID-19 death, America has become the epicenter of the pandemic. The death toll doubled in just two days, and America's top infectious disease specialist is now warning that millions of people face infection and 200,000 could die. Already, more than 136,000 people are infected and more than 2,400 have died from the virus. Late today, President Trump sent a warning to Americans saying the worst is yet to come. The peak, the highest point of death rates, remember this, is likely to hit in two weeks. Nothing would be worse than declaring victory before the victory is won. That would be the greatest loss of all. Therefore, the next two weeks and during this period, it's very important that everyone strongly follow the guidelines, have to follow the guidelines. The president announced today that he is extending federal guidelines for social distancing until April 30th to try to slow the spread. Jennifer Johnson has the latest. America, now the world's epicenter of the pandemic. In another attempt to contain hotspots, the Centers for Disease Control has issued a new 14-day travel advisory for people in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, the states with more than half the country's infections and nearly half the deaths. This is not a lockdown. It is a travel advisory. It's nothing that we haven't been doing, right? Non-essential people uh, should stay at home. The travel ban does not apply to essential industries like trucking. Tighter restrictions aimed at slowing the spread of the virus expected to only get worse. Looking at what we're seeing now, you know, I would say between 100 and 200,000 cases, but I don't want to be held to that because it's, it's, it's uh, excuse me, deaths. I mean, we're going to have millions of cases. The U.S. death toll doubled from Thursday to Saturday as cases of the virus skyrocket in big cities like New Orleans, Milwaukee, Chicago and Detroit. Many governors say there is no way things will start opening back up around Easter time, as U.S. President Donald Trump had suggested. The Washington metropolitan area has, uh, Maryland, D.C. and Virginia, quadrupled in the past week, and we see that continuing to grow exponentially, and we think uh, in two weeks around Easter, we're going to be looking a lot more like New York. Hundreds on the front line are getting infected. Over 500 police officers in New York City alone. Cedric Dixon, the first detective to die from the virus. We are hurting, we are crying, and we continue to fight. Makeshift medical centers are rapidly being built by U.S. soldiers across the country as COVID-19 patients overwhelm hospitals. These beds are for virus-free emergencies. We want to make sure that we can offload those patients to a hospital setting that is going to be safe and efficient for them. With millions of businesses shut down, America's unemployment rate continues to rise. Experts say the virus could leave 20 percent of the country unemployed. The White House says it's hard to know. It's hard to predict these numbers because we've never had anything like this where we've shut down the U.S. economy for medical reasons. Americans facing uncertainty on both economic and medical fronts as they try to survive this pandemic. Jennifer Johnson, Global News, Washington. Scientists have measured stark drops in pollution around the world since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Measures to curb the spread have forced huge drops in travel and commerce globally. As the world hits pause to tackle the virus, Redmond Shannon looks at how this period could help shape environmental policies of the future. Venice is a magical place, but tourism means its canals are normally full of traffic and polluted. That was until the pandemic stopped everything. The clear waters, a glimpse into a cleaner past. The same effect can be seen in the air. Northern Italy is seeing a sharp drop this year in NO2, a toxic pollutant from diesel vehicles. A similar effect in China across many industries. Uh, we saw operating rates that were about a quarter lower um, than usual at that time of the year. And all of that meant that uh, um, CO2 emissions were reduced by about 25%. As China ramps up again, the annual effect may not be huge, but it is helping scientists to see how changes in various sectors can affect pollution and greenhouse gases. Yes, I think it will give us an idea of how we're going to isolate different processes and how much they're contributing. Roshin Kaman at Columbia University in New York has measured similar drops in pollution as the Big Apple hibernates. 
it was quite surprising to see how much of the CO2 dropped, but the biggest change was in the CO, the carbon monoxide. Even though airlines are mothballing their fleets and highways are empty, technology is allowing some sectors to continue almost as normal. We're at an inflection point in the sense that we've seen massive collective action around the pandemic. Um, and we also have the opportunity to reset the economy in a way that mitigates climate change. Governments could offer incentives to employers um, to allow their employees to work from home some of the time. Um, and so that is something that we may see come out of this. Lawmakers and industry will be eager to get economies back on their feet as soon as the pandemic is over, but they will also have more choices in how they do so. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London.